Uh, Herb. Yeah, Don? Uh, what do they call this thing we're standing on? Feet? No, no, the cold thing under our feet. Oh, oh, oh I see. Uh, technically, this is called an ice flow. Why do you ask? Well, because it's breaking in half, Herb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is. Well, turn on Beekman and uh, just go with the flow. <laughs> I can't go with flow. I'm dating Denise. Bye-bye, Don. Back during long flights at zero gravity, astronauts can temporarily grow two inches in height. <laughs> I'm Beekman, and you've just broken into Beekman's world. Like that? Oh, I'm not playing it. I dropped the cord in it and I'm trying to get it out. Our story so far. Beekman enters, ignores Lester, and says, Liza, I need a question pronto. And the brilliant and beautiful Liza responds by reading the following. Becky Maupin of Fulton, Missouri wants to know, is it possible to sleep with your eyes open? What an eye-opening question. Let's get Papa. I'm with not through yet. Bobby Rower of Spirit Lake, Iowa, inquires, why do we get that junk in our eyes after we sleep? Oh, it sounds like a couple of beak maniacs are losing sleep over sawn logs. So, to lay their curiosity to rest, here's a legend in his own nap time, a famous imaginary character from 19th century literature. From the pen of Washington Irving, Rip Van Winkle! What a nap! If I don't get my 20 years of sleep, I'm no good to anybody. Robin? I think Rat Man is sleeping. <laughs> Either that or working. With Lester, it's hard to tell. When we sleep, our muscles relax, our heart beats slower, and our breathing slows down. Why do we have to sleep? Well, most animals. Including people in rat suits? including people, need to sleep every day to relax their brains and restore their bodies. We sleep in four stages. First stage lasts about 10 minutes. In this stage, you're aware of what's going on around you, and you may even be able to answer questions one word answers or grunts. Right, Lester? During stage two, which lasts from 20 minutes to half an hour, you no longer see things around you, and your thoughts are very scattered. Like Lester's when he's awake. Not that scattered. Total relaxation of the muscles occur in stage three, which lasts from 10 to two. <gasps> 20 minutes. This is when we do most of our tossing and turn. Stage four is deep sleep, also called delta sleep. Most people stay in this stage for only about 20 minutes. Uh, excuse me, your Van Winkleness. <laughs> just don't add up. Ten minutes for stage one, half an hour tops for stage two, uh, 20 minutes max for stage three, and another 20 for stage four, for a grand total of an hour and 20 minutes! Aren't you supposed to get eight hours of shut-eye a night? Hey? 
Now listen up, Sleeping Beauty. Not you. At the end of stage four, people start drifting through stage three to stage two. And it is then when something very interesting happens. Your eyes start moving very quickly. This is called REM, or REM sleep. Oh, I remember that. REM stands for rapid eye movement. During your eight hours of bagging Z's, you'll have three to five periods of rapid eye movement. It's also known as dreaming sleep, because you dream when your orbs are in orbit. <laughs> the four stages of sleep repeat themselves all night long. And all day long if you play your cards right. <laughs> It isn't every day a Rip Van Winkle shows up, or for that matter, wakes up. I bet he told you all there is to know about sleep. He didn't answer either of the questions we needed to answer. Liza, I'm in a race against time. Reprise, as in repeat. Question numero uno. Is it possible to sleep with your eyes open? Rarely. That's because of a tiny muscle that closes our eyes when the muscle relaxes. Sleeping with eyes closed is important for two reasons. It gives the brain a rest and your eyes stay moist while they're closed. Get me with another one fast. This is a tough one. Why do we have eye gunk in the corners of our eyes when we wake up? Eye gunk, also known as eye crispies. <laughs> Lester, go back to sleep. Paper pastries. Oh, Lester. Eyeball boogers. Lester, I'm warning the you. The slimy greenish goop that's plastered to the boundaries of my baby blues every morning. Let me tell you something. Properly prepared, they're darn good eating. <laughs> We're speaking of eye mucus here. Mmm, yum. It's the eye's own self-cleaning secretion system. Oh, say secretion again, except this time with a little French accent. It's a mixture of salt, water. Hey, forget the recipe. The really important thing to remember is they taste like chicken. Uh, 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 so, Becky and Bobby, that's the schmooze on why you snooze. And what's in store when you snore? Coming up next, it's a disappearing act. But you'll be able to see it. Don't disappear. We'll be back. Belly up. It's time to open your mind. Here he is, the angler of accuracy, the fishmonger of fact. Duality, the David Ogden Styers of Vulcanized Tigers, the one, the only, the Ogden You hunk em, I'll bunk em. Let's do the mouse. Did you know that gorillas can't swim? Question from Laura Miller of Frontenac, Missouri. She asks, Dear Beekman, does gum really take seven years to digest? Answer? No. But it takes three and a half years to get gum out of your fur. Fast fact and helpful household hint. To remove gum that's stuck in your hair or fur, use peanut butter. Oh, then how do you get the peanut butter out of your hair? Use gum. <laughs> Just josh it. Am I crazy, or did I really see that? Yes. Hmm. Half that! A dense fog, 50 feet deep, over an area of about 100 square miles, contains no more moisture than is in this bucket of water. Fast effect. I've been in a dense fog all my life. Dear Beekman, where do you get off? Telling everybody what oh, to dear, do. Oh, Liza. That heavenly chorus tells me it's time for uh, the Beekman Challenge. Lester, my fuzzy fur-lined friend, I challenge you to anytime, anything, anyway. 
good attitude. I challenge you to make this jar disappear. <laughs> Pot a problemo. Done. What else? <laughs> Lester, the challenge is to use science to make the jaw disappear. Oh, of course. This is a lever. That was gravity. I am science friendly. More like science friction. Behold carefully, Lester. Ray, a larger jar, please. I place the smaller jar into the larger jar. You science to make it disappear. Well, smarty hair. I can still see it. You haven't beheld long enough. What? I'm pouring in glycerin, the kind you can get at any drugstore. It hasn't disappeared yet, then. Yeah, relax, Mousy. Wow. Look at that. Hey. Camera trickery. Nay, <laughs> science. Uh, magic jar. Nay, science. Will you stop neighing and whinny the answer? Okay, enough horsing around. Let's trot out the secret. Yeah! Light travels at different speeds through different materials. Light travels more slowly through glass than it does through air. We can see the glass jars because when light coming through air hits the glass and slows down, it bends or refracts. The speed of light through glycerin is about the same as it is through glass. When you pour the glycerin over the small jar, the light doesn't slow down going from the glycerin to the glass. It doesn't refract, so you can't see it. Coming up next, we find out why some noises are soft and others are loud. I'll discuss noise with the boys after this. Let's get the show back on the road. Hit me one time, Liza. Oh, he probably meant with a letter. <laughs> yeah, fair thinking, Liza. Next time, I'll be more specific. It's from Lane Rayborn of Sherman Oaks, California. She asks, why are some noises louder than others? Great name, Lane. And a sound question, too. Hmm. This calls for some ample advice about amplification. Amplification. The process of increasing the magnitude of a variable quantity without altering any other quality from the Latin amplificata meaning to make large. What old Thustone was getting at was that amplification, the way we're using it, is the process by which sound gets louder. Isn't this how sound gets louder? <laughs> no, that's how guys in rat suits get fired. <laughs> promises, promises. First, Let's review what sound is. Oh, bogoscope! Sound is a kind of energy. It travels in waves that are created by the vibrations of material objects. In the case of your voice, those vibrations are made by your vocal cords. The vibrations cause a disturbance in the air around you. When that disturbance reaches somebody's ears, it's called sound. Well, I'm entranced. But the question is, why are some sounds louder than other sounds? Because some sounds disturb more air than other sounds. I think we may need some visual assistance. Mm, right. Let's see if we can find a way to make this make a louder sound. <clears throat> Excuse me, speak. 
This is a piece of string, and it doesn't make any noise. Ah, but it does when you rub it with a wet sponge. <laughs> Who doesn't? <clears throat> oh, 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 what a loud noise. My ears are killing me. Please, please stop before you cause permanent damage. Lester, that's the whole idea. That it doesn't make much noise. And why do you think that is? Like, it doesn't make much noise because the string is thin and doesn't disturb much air. Saloom! High five yourself! Huh? Now, what do we need to do to make it louder? Oh, I know! I know! Uh, light! Um, get it to disturb more air? Hey, hey! Is that what you were gonna say, Lester? About what? Okay. Now that we've got some sound, sound advice, let's do some sound, sound experiments. Head to the For your sound experiments, you'll need plenty of string. Paper or plastic cups, <laughs> a sponge, paper clips, a shoe box, a big spring, and a few rubber bands. <laughs> gotcha! Any experiments performed at home should be done with adult supervision, and all appropriate safety precautions should be taken. All directions should be followed exactly, and no substitutions should be used. <laughs> Let's turn up the volume on our piece of string. First, we poke a little hole in the bottom of one of our cups, and put the string through it like this. Next. We attach our string to the paper clip so it hangs from our upside down cup. Eliza, you do the honors. I get it. Before, we only had the string vibrating the air. Now, we have the string and the cup vibrating the air. And since the cup is so much bigger, it disturbs more air. The scientific word for the strength of a sound, or how loud it is, is amplitude. Incidentally, an amplifier in your stereo sends an electronic signal to a cone in your speaker, which vibrates and disturbs the air so that you can hear sound. <laughs> Are we just gonna stand here listening to Holiday for Strings? How about listening to Holiday for Springs? <laughs> Behold, a not so noisy spring. But, hook it up to a cup and. Liza's using the skinny, low surface area spring to vibrate the large surface area cup. That way, I just molecules and we can hear a veritable springtime jamboree. Aye, 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 aye. Now comes the top. Rubber bands. The Stradivarius of office supplies. Here's a little one, a regular size one, and Mr. Jumbo. When I straighten out a rubber band and twang it, you can barely hear it because it's not moving very much air. But when I wrap my rubber bands around this shoe box with a hole cut in the lid, a womp bop a loo bop get a load of this. We can hear the rubber bands better because the vibrating shoe box disturbs a lot more air. I really hope you dig the combo's sound. So late, Rayborn of Sherman Oaks. Now you're part of the crowd that understands the difference between soft and loud. Jack, please! Sean A. Urban of Toledo, Ohio wants to know, are Martians really real? We'll see if it's the occasion for a Martian invasion after this. Wee! 
If you have a question about how the world works, just write us at... Beekman's World, P.O. Box 30087, Kansas City, Missouri, 64112. Hmm, are Martians really real? Maybe. Scientists have sent robotic probes to explore the red planet, and they've found no evidence of life as we know it. But there are other strange creatures right here on Earth. Strange, but necessary. How are guys in rat suits necessary? Uh, they chase guys in cat suits? Maybe we'll explain more when we see you next time. On Beekman's World! Herb, do you suppose there could possibly be life on other planets? It is a possibility. Please take me to your remote control now, please. You're scaring me. Oh, sorry. Why don't you just turn off Beekman and we'll go have a slushie? Thank you. <laughs>